Loveless, the latest film from Russian director Andrei Zvijintsev, is a cold, great movie about searching for a loved one. It's a story about a family who were broken before they began and thus destined to cause further damage to those around them. Uh, Boris, Alexei Rosin, and Zhenya, uh, Mariana Spivak, are uh, recently separated and selling their house. Alexei, uh, Matvey Novikov, is their quiet 12-year-old son. Loveless is about the cold, hard search for something. Zhenya is searching for the love she never had with Boris. Boris is searching for a new family with his pregnant girlfriend. When Alexei overhears his parents furiously arguing about their divorce and about him, he leaves. Was he kidnapped? Is he hiding from his parents with his grandmother or with his best friend? Perhaps he's gone out on his own search, uh, a search for the love and sense of belonging that he lacks at home. The structure of this film is surprising. Uh, a lot of time is taken to establish the complex lives of both parents, including the progress towards their new families uh, with new lovers. About half of the film is devoted to this story of Boris and Genya juggling their new partners with work and with the pain of their previous relationship. But just as we settle into these two stories as the central narrative of Loveless, they abruptly take a back seat uh, to this news that their son Alexei has gone missing. The rug is pulled out as this news shakes up the parents and shakes up the film's uh, narrative flow. Abruptly, Loveless is no longer about these new relationships, but instead about being dragged back to the first family as a long, tough search for Alexei begins. New lovers fade into the background. Financial, real estate, career concerns quickly lose significance, and the movie becomes wholly consumed by this search for Alexei. With long, beautiful shots, Zvigintsev takes us through the experience of searching icy Moscow and its surrounding forests for the young boy. This sudden change of focus and halting of the expected narrative flow is arresting for the audience and for the characters. For Boris and Zhenya, it's a violent reminder that they can't simply move on from the first family that they've made together. Just as they're selling the past and buying new lives, the reality of the life they have and the choices they've made rears up with immediacy. The disappearance of their son is blamed on their desire to move too quickly and too selfishly into new relationships. Uh, these two things, this desire and this new trauma, are not just associated psychologically or ethically, but practically. Uh, the parents' argument and Genya's spending her nights uh, with a new lover really are, are presented as a cause. They set the stage for Alexei's easy, unsupervised departure. At key moments in Loveless, uh, the camera, the cinematography, does something unusual. The camera wanders away from our characters to a nearby window and then slowly peers out through unclear glass to the cold land outside. Zvigintsev seems interested in these boundaries between interior and exterior, the boundaries of buildings, of people and of families. These drifting camera shots away from the initial object of focus to something else further away reminded me of that famous shot in uh, Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver, uh, when Travis Bickle is fumbling through a painful phone call with um, love interest, uh, the camera slides away from the phone booth and down a corridor towards the building's exit. In Taxi Driver and in Loveless, this camera movement functions as an escape from the pain present inside the building to the free space outside. Like Alexei's escape, this distant space might also represent death. Uh, this camera movement is away from pain towards something else, distant, unknown, something cold, dark, but nonetheless tempting. Zvigintsev also uses some great slow panning shots of decaying structures, most strikingly in a search through an abandoned building, the building that Alexei and his friend referred to as their uh, secret base. These moments reminded me of uh, Andrei Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky's lens would delve so slowly and so closely into environments, uh, often environments consisting of nature and artifice, that the features there would merge into one slightly monstrous, alien-seeming thing. Kind of like repeating a word so many times it loses its meaning, these two Russian directors both 
use the camera's gaze, gaze into areas and into objects that has such a cold clinical eye uh, that those areas and objects somehow become alien. Uh, in these spaces, time seems to flatten out. In a decaying building overrun by moss and rain, we see new and old, natural and artificial, combined to create a strange, timeless space. That the abandoned building searched in Loveless might also be where Alexei went to escape from his family's repeating cycle is appropriate. While Boris and Genya seem to be stuck in a time loop, Alexei's base uh, appears somehow outside of time. Zvigintsev seems to use the idea of interior and exterior to explore the way his characters erect barriers to com compartmentalize and to protect their interior lives. These barriers for Boris and Virginia consist of false fronts or new relationships or stories told to work colleagues to hide a deep pain or, or an apathy inside. Penetration of these boundaries by the camera, by characters, or by decaying processes of time signifies, or seems to signify, the threat that these protective walls might come down to reveal this hidden inner reality. In a scene at Boris's work, he talks with a work colleague about hypothetically deceiving the company about his divorce. If he presents it well enough, it's suggested, a wife and children can be falsified or replaced, and the outside world, including his conservative Christian boss, will be none the wiser. This idea that one can go through a family trauma but simply replace the pieces and present oneself as if nothing happened is central to Loveless. By the end of the film, both parents have done just this really. New walls are up and things appear to have moved on. But if we penetrate those boundaries by uh, peering through a window or into an eye, the facade cracks and reveals the persistence of that earlier trauma. Deteriorating walls and windows in Loveless also indicate uh, the passage of time. Walls are put up to compartmentalise, but with time they decay and the cold creeps back in. The final scene of Loveless works on this same symbolic level, exploring the ideas of interior exterior, comfort exposure, present past, and the notion that these opposites are only kept separate, uh, often by fragile walls. The days and weeks spent searching a snow-covered Moscow and its dark, abandoned buildings were cold and harsh scenes. Loveless's final scenes, though, years after the search has ended, are, uh, I think, the film's coldest. Zhenya and Boris haven't found happiness. They're with their partners, uh, Boris is with a new child, and they're in new houses, but they're in the same loveless states, perpetuating the same cycle of apathy. Most strikingly, we witness Boris's loveless disposition and behaviour towards his new son. Uh, Genya is inside her new, seemingly comfortable house, still attached to her phone and still by Anton, her, her new lover's side. She steps out onto her balcony and begins running on a treadmill. This provides a, a really interesting image of, of these opposites, uh, these different things coming together and the boundaries between them being blurred. As she runs on this treadmill on her balcony, in her home, she is somehow both inside and outside. She is protected but exposed. She is moving, but she is stationary. This breaking through the wall that separates also seems to bring together past and present for Genia. As we look into her eyes and she into ours, into the cameras, we see that she's still in the past. She's still out in the cold, still loveless and still searching.